Welcome to PMPA's Final Cut of the Week, where we share important information you may have missed while you were making essential parts. I'm Renee Merker. And I'm Miles Free. This is what you need to know for the week ending July 29th, 2022. The second consecutive quarter of negative growth was logged by the Bureau of Economic Analysis on Thursday. They reported the first or advance estimate coming in at negative 0.9% for the second quarter of 2022. This is somewhat less than the 1.6% decrease recorded in the first quarter. Since this technically meets the criteria for a recession to be declared, it is likely that the NBER will wait until August 25th when the next or second estimate is reported. However, the price index for gross domestic purchases increased 8.2% in the second quarter compared with an increase of 8.0% in the first quarter. What does this mean? Inflation is still running hot, four times the Fed's target of 2% over the long run. In an effort to return inflation to its 2% objective, the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System voted unanimously to approve a 75 basis point, that's three quarters of a percent, increase in the primary credit rate to 2.5%, effective July 28, 2022. The federal funds target rate range was raised to two and a quarter to two and a half percent and expects ongoing increases. The Chicago Fed National Activity Index was unchanged at negative 0.19 in June of 2022 from a downwardly revised negative 0.19 in May. According to the release, quote, index points to steady economic growth in June. Industrial production decreased two-tenths of a percent in June after being unchanged in May, unquote. Meanwhile, the Dallas Fed Manufacturing Outlook Survey indicated that Texas factory activity decelerated sharply in June, with the production index falling from 18.8 to 2.3, reaching its lowest reading since May of 2020. However, labor market measures continue to indicate robust employment growth and longer work weeks. The employment index moved down six points to 15.2, but remained well above its series average of 7.7. 24% of firms noted net hiring, while 9% noted net layoffs. The hours worked index pushed up further from 7.4 to 11.8. According to the U.S. Census Bureau announcement on Thursday, New orders for manufactured durable goods in June increased $5 billion, or 1.9%. This increase, which is up eight of the last nine months, followed a 0.8% May increase. Transportation equipment, which is up three consecutive months, led the increase with $4.5 billion, or 5.1%. The year-over-year -year change is up 11.1%. Shipments of manufactured durable goods in June were up 13 of the last 14 months and increased $0.7 billion, or 0.3%. This followed a 1.5% May increase. Computers and electronic products, up 7 of the last 8 months, led the increase, $0.4 billion, or 1.4%. Shipments were up 11.7% year over year. Last week, I testified on behalf of PMPA members and the precision machining industry to the United States International Trade Commission about the effects of Section 232 tariffs on our industry. I share my testimony, thoughts, and experience on PMPA's Speaking of Precision podcast released Monday, which can be found on major podcast platforms or on pmpa.org. Now it's time for our weekly tip. An accident is an unplanned occurrence in a production setting where a person is injured. An incident without injury is what many people call a near miss. Your employer should have an emergency plan to deal with accidents and injuries in your shop. 
we put together a list in the event that you can't find your employer's plan and you encounter an accident involving a coworker. To view or download this list, go to PMPA.org's Knowledge Centers or Final Cut of the Week. And that's our take on what you need to know for the week ending July 29, 2022. For more information and links about any of the topics discussed today, please go to pmpa.org and click on Final Cut of the Week. Thanks for checking in. We'll see you next Friday.